he, he advanced and he got a silver medal. He just couldn't compete because he was asking an RCA short for stuff like this, head blows. But our man, Vander Hallfield, received the bronze medal because he recognized what, what a great spirit and sportsman he is. And today, I will tell you, I love this man. What he has done for amateur boxing, he has put his money, his time, his effort. I know the things that he's done for his church, the things that he has done for the boys club down in the Atlanta area. The man who were champion in the ring. Well known. 
held the title longer than any man in history. He was more title defenses, more knockouts, more first round knockouts, more uh, consecutive knockouts. And all of that is quite a few about four years of his crime to this country in World War II. When this country was uh, in deep fear at the bombing of Pearl Harbor, Joe did something that was unprecedented in the world of sports and the history of this country. He put his title on the line and gave every penny of the purse to the government, the Navy, the Wii Fund. And even when he was criticized for fighting for nothing, Joe said, I'm not fighting for nothing, I'm fighting for my country. And then he did it again and put his title on the line and gave all the money to the Army Relief Fund and said, I'm only doing what any red-blooded American would do. And then he joined the Army and did it 96 more times. 96. And during one of those fundraisers, Joe, uh, Joe cemented his place as an American hero. Um, only boxer buried in Arlington National Cemetery. When he said, we're going to win, we're going to do our part because we're on God's side. And so it's with humble respect, it's that um, we're here to accept this award from the Bad Boxing Hall of Fame. I think I am still a little better looking than he is. <laughs> Giving thanks first to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who gives me the strength to do all things. I thank Rich Murata, the founder of the President of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, to, Sh to Michelle Corrales Lewis, Vice President, and to the Board of Directors for bestowing this honor on me. And congratulations and congratulations to all the fellow inductees. I want to spend a few minutes I have giving thanks to all the people who have made my journey to this podium possible. No one accomplishes anything important in life without a team behind him. I started by thanking Muhammad Ali, who first captured my interest in boxing while watching him as a young man. 
and in a parallel uni uh, and in a parallel universe, Ali captured the heart of a pretty young woman who I met years later at a fight. My wife of 31 years, Lenore Bayless. So thank you, Ali. I'd next like to thank Henry Winston for providing me with two tickets to the Ali Bugner fight in 1973. Or my cousin Eugene Van Hook and I would have been ex experiencing, experiencing it from the Vegas Convention Center out in the parking lot. It was my first time I'd ever seen Ali live and ultimately the moment that defined my desire to be a part of the sport of boxing. I got my start in the Golden Gloves program as an amateur judge. After several years of judging, a new friend named Jerry Roth suggested that I try refereeing. He said, you are young, good looking, and in shape. And I thought, why not? I asked Richard Steele if he would train me. He took me to Hal Miller's Golden Gloves gym. Richard got, me, Richard got two fighters in the, in the ring to spar. After a couple of rounds, one fighter started bleeding over his right eye. Richard stopped the sparring match and asked me, what happened? I didn't know. In that moment, I clearly understood the important role of a referee. Thank you, Richard, my mentor, and Jerry Roth. As I worked, thank you. As I worked my way up as an amateur referee, my friend Johnny Lehman helped me get appointed as an inspector with the Nevada Athletic Commission. This gave me access to watch Richard Steele along with Mills Lanes, Davey Pearl, Carlos Padilla, Joey Curtis, and Toby Gibson. <laughs> in the ring as well as in the dressing rooms giving instructions to the fighters. Ten, after 10 years of amateur refereeing, I felt well prepared for the appointment as a professional referee. But it didn't happen at first. I waited and waited and waited and waited. It was heartbreaking and devastating. In 1991, I finally at the point of going for broke and prepared a letter to the Nevada Athletic Commission to ex express my frustration. Luckily, my diplomatic wife took the letter and managed to appear to the commissioners. Sense of fairness, and it was granted, I was granted a hearing. Thank you, honey. Before my hearing, Mark Ratner took me aside, coached me on what to say, and in the meeting, thank you, Mark, I was finally appointed as a referee and my professional journey began. But there would be more hurdles for me to overcome. At this time, the heavyweight division was going strong and I wanted to be a part of it. As fate would have it, an experienced and talented referee named Joe Cortez moved to Las Vegas and with his arrival, there was plenty of experienced referees to choose from. Nothing was coming my way. I was hungry for the big fights, but I, but I was not getting fed. Eventually, my frustration built to the point that I wanted to go back to either being an inspector or just quitting. I had many conversations that helped me hang in there. Conversations with Luther Mack, Richard Steele, Joe Cortez, Patricia Jarman, and Vic Draculich. Mark Rettner said to me, Kenny, be patient. Your time will come. My, offer, my wife often mentioned that no matter what the assignments were, I had the best seat in the house to my favorite sport. Thank all you guys. In 2004, four months after successful cancer surgery, I got a call from the commission office that I had been assigned the Oscar De La Hoya Bernard Hopkins fight. I thank Mark Ratner because I know he took a lot of heat from the media for giving me that assignment. The rest is history. 
The past 10 years have been truly magical for me. I've been blessed and I've, I've been blessed to officiate over 100 world title fights. Thank you. I want to thank my I want to thank all my fellow referees, Vic Draculich, Robert Byrd, Tony Weeks, Russell Mora, and Jay Nady. I feel we are the best team of referees in the business, and beyond that, a brotherhood of true friends. We work very hard to get better at what we do. We even reach out outside of Nevada to help visiting referees like Gerard White from California, who's here today. I also want to thank all my courageous fighters that I have entered the ring with. Your dedication and heart inspires us all. Most importantly, I want to thank all my family here today, starting with my mother, 96 years old, Corrine Bayless, my twin brother, my loving wife, Lenore, my three sons, James, Ryan, and Alex, my nephew, Charles Bayless, my Van Hook cousins, who have always supported me, Clarence, Lamont, and Larry, and finally, my adopted Canadian friends, Victoria Matchbank and Eric Smith. This night means so much to me because you're all here to share it. Last but not least, thank you to everyone here tonight to support all the inductees. God bless you all. I thank God for all of the things that he has done for me. I thank him because, um, you know, a lot of People never thought that I would reach the age of 70. But I am 70 years of age. We have had so many wonderful times and I have done so many wonderful things. And God gave me something very special, something that he knew, he knew that I needed someone to help me along my way, someone that had common sense. So he gave me a woman that was my wife for 33 years, Gladys still. He gave me my wife and uh, he told me that, uh, you know, we supposed to have fun and we did. That's why I have two beautiful daughters over here. Sakisha, the one that you just heard, beautiful daughter, Keisha. She's a wonderful daughter, very smart. Gave me another daughter named Shannon, Shannon Steele, that is pregnant. She knows how to have fun, I guess, too. So, and gave me four granddaughters, I mean four grandkids, Kennedy, Marley, and Kiani, and Nolan is on his way. So I've been very blessed. They have beautiful, wonderful husbands, Lamar and Steve, I thank you for taking care of my girls. I've been very happy, very blessed. And this is a wonderful night. This is a wonderful organization. This organization is our organization. It's up to each and every one of us to make this organization bigger and better each and every year. Now, Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. I watch Baseball Hall of Fame, I watch the Basketball Hall of Fame, I watch the Football Hall of Fame just last week, and it was something to see all of these guys getting honored. It is a privilege. It is a wonderful thing to be able to be inducted to the Hall of Fame at the end of your road, at the end of the after everything is done, you want to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. 
And I'm happy to be able to say that Rich, Michelle, I really, I really, uh, I'm very happy to be inducted. Thank you for what you have done. All the board members of Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, I thank you. This is a wonderful night for me and my family and everyone here. If it hadn't been for a guy to give me a call named Sig Rogic, I wouldn't have been here. Of course, he was prompt to do it by Chuck Minker and, and Mark Ratner. So I'm, I'm very happy that I had them as friends. Once I got here, Dr. Nave took me on his arms, Dr. Gunham, Dr. Homansky, all of these guys was with the Boxing Hall of Fame. Dr. Alamo also was with the commission. I just thank all of y'all for being my friend. Thank each and every one of you for sticking with me all through the years and days of my career that enabled me for tonight to stand here and be inducted to Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Thank you and God bless you. And as board of directors, um, Rich Murata, Michelle Corrales-Lewis, and of course to Barry and to Rosie. Rosie, it's, it's two in the morning back in Brooklyn right now. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank um, my families, my personal family, my lovely wife, Laura, and Stephen and Lori, they're here. My top rank family, Lee Samuels and his wife, Mary Margaret, Carl Moretti, and all the other top rank people here. And most importantly, my boxing family, which is all of you here, the great fighters, the champions, the commissioners, the writers, everybody associated with our sport in the great state of Nevada. We're all Nevadans here. Nevada is, you know, it's Dempsey to Tyson. It's, it's Sugar Ray Robinson to Sugar Ray Leonard. It's, it's just uh, the greatest sport in the world and you guys are the greatest people and I thank you so much. I'm here to present an award to a guy that I've known for 18 years. He's a friend, he's a mentor, and he was a legend. Um, he's our matchmaker. He's been a part of my success for 18 years now as a professional. And without him, you know, I don't know where my career would be. He's been a mentor, he's been a father figure, and he's a legend. None other, none other than Kanea Bozes Edwards. I'm so happy to be here. I thank everybody for being present. I'm extremely honored to be here tonight accepting this award. And there's so many people I'd like to thank, including my family, friends, and those I have lost along the way. I'm not going to lie, training for 15 rounds was tough. <laughs> But you know what? It was worth it every challenge, every obstacle, and each and every bend in the road. It's all of the things that gives me strength to stand here today, humbled at all of my accomplishments. Listen, I may be retired from boxing, but the bouts are not over. As we get older, 
we must still challenge ourselves to stay alive, talk to a stranger, one or two, exercise your muscles, read a book, continue to expand your horizons, show the people that are close to you your appreciation. Tell them you love them, because if you wait until tomorrow, you might be too late. Listen, I thank boxing for putting the palm of the world in my hands. And now I'm putting my hands onto the world by paving the way for another young dreamer to follow into my footsteps. Thank you to my family, my wife, for 34 years. Rumiko. My oldest daughter, Michelle, she made all the way from London to, to be here today. My two daughters, Jenna and Dominique, and my granddaughter, Emiko. Thank you to all my friends, Tim Mayweather. <laughs> They all know who they are, and may with the promotions. And above all, to the best fighter on the planet. <laughs> Floyd Money Mayweather. God bless you all. second straight year. He is getting this honor. This year as a result of his masterful victory over Canelo Alvarez in September, in the richest fight in boxing history. And then when he fought a determined, wild swinging, ready to come out with everything he had, Maidana, he definitely figured out again a way to victory. The formula for victory, he's done it every time that he's gotten into the ring. He is the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame Fighter of the Year for the second consecutive year, Floyd Mayweather. First, I want to thank Rich Murata. I want to thank Rosie Perez. I want to thank Barry Tompkins. I want to thank the fans, of course. And I want to thank the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. Um, of course, y'all know what it is. Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Um, I want to come in and take my head off to all the legendary champions that's here today that paved the way for me to be where I'm at. Because without you guys, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Um, you know, I can just, you know, every day I sit back when I'm at home and just think about, you know, um, I used to keep my fingers crossed and, and wanted, I couldn't wait for the chance to hear the announcers say, let's get ready to rumble. I always wanted to, you know, I watch Sugar Ray Leonard fights. I watch Mike Tyson fights. I watch Holyfield fights. And there's so many legendary champions that I watched every day. And I said, if I can just put everything into, into just one box and shake it up. And that's what I did. And, you know, because you guys are, you guys are still and was remarkable champions. Um, every day, the only thing I can do, I, continue, I try to continue to learn in the sport. You know, I'm still learning, I'm still growing. I mean, but to be in the sport um, 18 years and be champion 17 years, is, is I'm truly blessed. That's the only thing I can really say. Um, you know, you know, social media and so many different media outlets and all the young champions that's on the rise, I commend you guys. You guys are, re are remarkable. I want you guys to continue to keep up the good work continue to work hard, continue to believe, 
because that's what I did. All I did was believe, and if you, if you speak it, it can come to an existence, and that's what I did. Um, uh, Mayweather Promotions, um, we are the past, the present, and the future of sports and entertainment. And, you know, only thing I wanted to do is hand the torch to the next fighter that's on the rise. Um, records are made to be broken. Hopefully, someday, it'd be another champion that's in the same position that I'm in, and I'll be on the other side. And that's what I really want. Um, my father, I mean, without him, of course, it all started with him. It all started in Grand Rapids, Michigan, at 846 Adams. And Boza, I really, really want to thank you because, you know, you keep me on the right path every day. And I know when I'm in tip-top shape, because when I'm in the boxing gym, I look over at Boza, and once he give me that nod, then I say, I'm ready. Um, everybody that showed up today, thank you. Continue to keep boxing alive. Uh, Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, we're just getting started. This is the second year, and we're going to grow. We're going to get bigger and better. You have my support. I just want to say thank you to everybody. Appreciate it. Tonight, uh, he said something about another comeback, so he was really serious. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not joking. Um, but this is a, it's a great night for us. Thanks to, for the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame for having us. Um, a good honor. A lot of great fights for my father happened here. Um, one that wasn't so great, um, Evander Holyfield and my father. I think you hit my father with about 14 straight punches. <laughs> and I said when I got older, I was going to get you, but you're still in shape. So go get him. Go get him. <laughs> All right, so forget it. But congratulations to you, Mr. Holyfield. Great honor, and a lot of great champions in here tonight. Um, but really, it's a good, it's a, it's a pleasure to be around Miguel Diaz, another honoree, and Bruce Trampler, who was a part of my father's comeback to make sure that we had success in our family. And people say that you know boxing is separated. Um, that's not true. Uh, Mr. Archie Moore was in my father's corner, um, and Sonny Liston and my father were sparring partners. So this is just history and we're all connected in some way and thanks to the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame for having us to connect us again. Thank you. First and foremost, on behalf of my family, we would like to say thank you to the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame and the members of the board, especially to Mr. Rick Morota and Ms. Michelle Corrales for their warmth welcoming. Also, to the class of 2014 inductees, we would like to say congratulations. It is really, really crazy to be here surrounded with, with so many great champions like Mr. Leonard and my father and Holyfield and Mayweather. It's every, every fan's dream. Ever since I can remember, our life has always been about boxing. Growing up a Duran kid was not always easy because it involved a lot of sacrifices. And at an age when you needed most, the most of your parents, they couldn't always be there. But we always supported him because we knew he was working for our future. When I was asked to speak about my father tonight in, in, in a more personal way, the first thing that came to my mind was how wonderful and how full of joy and life and how eccentric he is. Like I remember him walking our pet lion in the neighborhood like he was just another pet <laughs> and wrestling him wearing his speedos in the backyard like he was Tarzan. But <laughs> that's why we love him so much because he is just one of a kind. <laughs> but on a serious note, um, my father taught us valuable lessons like always stay true to ourselves and always be kind and humble. He's a very humble man. So that was one of the most important things that he taught us, to always be humble. So it is important for me to say 
not only is my father one of the most genuine men you could ever meet and one of the greatest fighters of all time, as a man and father, he is our world champion. And we thank God every day for giving us the honor of having Roberto Duran in our lives. You're the best dad. We love you. My English, regular. Well, I'm going to the United States. I'm a good friend of mine, I'm Cuba. He said, Duran, not too much English. Only woman, only money is good for you. It's all perfect. Well, ante todo, quiero darle las gracias a este pueblo que me vio crecer dentro del boxeo y que me dio todas las oportunidades y que me aguantaron por cinco décadas. Well, first, first of all, I would like to thank this incredible town. They gave me so much opportunities and saw most of my major fights. Y estoy muy contento. El Estados Unidos siempre ha dado grandes boxeadores. Una de las grandes pelea mía es con el vecino que tengo acá atrás, con Leona, mi buen, somos buenos amigos, un gran boxeador, como todos los grandes boxeadores que se han presentado hoy aquí, Holyfield, Mike Tyson, eh, Robert Durán, this me. Sí. Y estoy contento porque estamos entrando hoy en día al Salón de la Fama, todos los panameños que están despiertos todavía en Panamá, esperando esta gran hora de que Roberto Irán entre al Salón de la Fama, porque está entrando todo Panamá al Salón de la Fama. Well, he would like to congratulate uh, the United States of America for having such, so many fighters, great fighters, like Mike Tyson, Holyfield, and uh, his neighbor here behind him, who uh, used to be his rival and now is his friend. <laughs> and uh, he would like to send a shout out to Panamanians who are probably awake right now watching this live. And uh, <laughs> Panama, and uh, that he would like to say to Panama that not only is Roberto Duran coming into the Hall of Fame of Las Vegas, but whole Panama country is coming in as well. Y también. Y también quiero darle las gracias a todos los mexicanos porque tengo familia mexicana porque mi papá es mexicano y está mi fa y mi familia mexicana también se encuentra aquí y también está entrando al salón de la fama muchos mexicanos toda la familia mexicana también. He would also like to thank Mexicans and congratulate him because his father was Mexican and his Mexican family is here tonight supporting him and he would like to thank Mexican people and also telling them that. Not only is Roberto Duran coming into the Hall of Fame, but also Mexicans as well. Yeah. Eh, quiero darle las gracias. Me voy contento, feliz de la vida. Quiero darle las gracias al Estados Unidos por, so por soportarme por cinco décadas. <laughs> y que Dios bendiga también a todos los americanos que me han dado el apoyo. A mi amigo Soleimán, que lo quiero mucho y lo respeto bastante, al señor Rafael, a Martín eh, de Panamá, el uruguayo también. Uh -huh. Y que Dios lo bendiga a todos ustedes, que yo estoy contento, estoy feliz de la vida. Gracias por soportarme tanto todos ustedes. <laughs> well, he would like to thank America because um, America gave him so much and America put up with him for five decades. They supported him and he's very thankful for that. He would also like to thank Mr. Suleiman for put up, putting up with him as well, his friend in Panama, Martin, and thank you all and God bless this country. Thank you, thank you. And now to present the trophy, your photo op. We're gonna bring him right over here if we can, but I know he wants to say a few words first. But his old rival wants to say a few words, and then he will give the championship trophy, the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame trophy, to Roberto. Roberto, on behalf of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, I want to say congratulations to you, my champion. Congratulations, my friend. God bless you, brother.
Okay here, okay. Okay. Uh, what's up, brother? You know, I'm one of those guys, I know there's a couple of tough guys in this house, but I'm one of those guys, if I would have heard a story like that, I would have said, man, I, I, I wish you would have done that to me, but I would have done that to y'all. You know, listen, I'm having the opportunity to bring one of the greatest fighters in the history of the world in here, Mr. Real Deal, Evander Holyfield. You know, and um, it took me a long time in life to become, um, what's that word, have gratitude and be humble. And um, this is a real humbling and a, a moment of um, gratitude for me to be able to um, introduct this man into the Nevada Hall of Fame. And if everybody stand up and give him a warm applause for one of the greatest fighters, one of the most consummate professional fighters, determined fighters, you almost have to kill him to beat him. Mr. Van, the real deal Holyfield. Is he here? The real deal. First of all, I'd like to give honor to the head of my life, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'd like to thank the Lord because the fact of the matter is that I know that all good things come from the Lord. And I'd like to thank Mike. I like to thank Mike and because it, one of one of the things that I you know, always wanted people to know that you know when when you when you honor somebody when you respect somebody you know I've been knowing Mike ever since ever since uh, ever since ever since Mike was 17 and and you know Mike and I we both on the on the losing squad trying to make the Olympic team you know I've seen Mike work. And I realized that Mike was a hard worker. And I realized that good things you can't wish away. So, you know, I, you know, I respect Mike and all that Mike done. I was the one that got a chance to see what Mike do. And I, I studied Mike more than I studied anybody. And, you know, I, and so I, I said that to go on to say, you know what? God is good and God is good all the time. And, and the, and the fact is that, you know, I, I want to thank, I want to thank my mother. And because who I am is, is all that my mother instilled in me. It three things that, you know, that uh, my mother taught me. She taught me to listen, follow direction, not quit. And, and these are the things that allow me to be the man that I am today. And, and, and. And I think, <laughs> and I think, I think that I think the, the the boxing, it was it was it's me going to the boys club at the age of at the age of six years old. I was told that I could be like Muhammad Ali, and and so I had to ask my mama. And when I told the coach, I had to ask my mama. He looked at me and told me I had a good mama. So I went to ask my mom. She said, yeah, you can be like him, but these three things that you got to do, you got to listen, follow direction, not quit. And, and, and the, next thing, the next thing that my mother taught me, she taught me to never be prejudiced. And she told me that at a young age, she said, son, because you limit your opportunity of being the champ. Because my mother said, you know what? We live in a black neighborhood, and they poor already, so it's going to be hard for somebody who don't have nothing to give you opportunity than somebody who don't. And so I wasn't prejudiced, and that 70-year-old man, Carter Morgan, who was white, told me I could be like Muhammad Ali. And my first match, he told me, go out there. He said, see that kid there? I said, yes, sir. He said, I want you to run out there and hit him in the nose. He said, did you hear that? I said, yes, sir. He said, okay. And when that bell rang, I ran out there, and that kid ran out there, and you know, his coach told him to hit me in my nose. <laughs> and as we got up there, the kid closed his eyes. I didn't close my eyes, so I hit him red right in the nose. And he started crying, and the referee stopped the fight, and that coach, Mr. Morgan, came in, told me I took my first step, 
and being the heavyweight champ of the world. Now, I go back and tell my mama I win this fight, and it was my mother that told me this, your son, anything that you want to have in life, you got to go through something. And because my mother told me that, and I realized that my mother said, most of all, a good attitude will take you a lot further than your talent. And so here I am. I used to get three whoopings a day. Because y'all think Mike was bad. I was real bad. <laughs> I got three whoopings a day. I'm glad somebody took the pressure off of me. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got three whoopings a day. I got my last whooping at the age of 19. So, you know, it, it was hard, but, and so, and the fact of doing that, my career developed because I just didn't quit. And I like to thank, I like to thank the Boys Club. I like to thank Amateur Boxing. I like to thank all these people that was in my life. And when things got even tougher, and they got tougher once I became, once I became the heavyweight champion of the world twice, and it was my children that I have. My children was that inspiration because I was just getting ready to get a, I fought, I fought Lennox Lewis. I was getting ready to quit. I had told Lennox Lewis I was going to knock him out in the third round. And when that bell rung, I didn't knock him out. I was getting ready to walk out. I seen my son, Evander Jr., sitting there. He, he was just looking at me. I didn't think of myself, but I thought about what they may say to my son. They're going to tell my son, you're going to be just like your daddy. When pressure hit him, he walked out the ring. That's the only reason why I didn't quit. I stayed in that ring, got me a drum bust. I ended up with a draw. And, the next, and then the next time I fight him, I made adjustment, but I didn't get the victory. But because I didn't get the victory, I had a good attitude, I became the four-time heavyweight champion of the world. And so, and I just like to close it out, close it out. I'd like to thank, i like to thank the Baller Boxers Association for introducing me and I, put me, allow me to be in the Hall of Fame. And I hope that what I have done in my Boston career to be able to inspire somebody else to be best. Because I know that, you know, records are meant to be broke. And I expect the young people to break it on. You have just, well, maybe not, but hopefully somebody do it. Thank you very much. I'm going to you again. God oh. damn. <laughs> Man, you put it down. Will Chamberlain my ass. What? Will Chamberlain don't have no kid. Will Chamberlain don't have no kid. And he said he had 10,000 girls. He's but, 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 yeah, see, I, I was good. I was loving for loving, though. I, I just only did 11 times. Oh, I, live, I respect that. All right, now another magic moment. It'll be Mike Tyson. Why don't you guys come out here who will actually present the trophy? of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame to his rival with the mini championship belt from the WBC to Evander Holyfield.